Have you seen this on your computer? This is Microsoft trying to control you by forcing you onto Windows 10. Well, they don't fool me. I'm not going to do it. There are different ways to run a computer, and I'll do it that way. I have 10 on my work computer, and I don't like it that much. So, here are the other ways to do it. I've been running Windows 7 on my computers for many years. And now, the big thing is Microsoft wants to force everyone onto Windows 10. And I have to ask, why? They're trying to make everything go on one operating system. They're trying to force you into a common piece of software so they can monitor you and track you and sell you more ads and all that kind of thing. And, you know, I don't like that idea. I'm not going to be forced into uh, running a different OS just because they say I should. So, what I've done, I'm running a second boot drive in my computer with a copy of Linux Mint 19.1 with the Cinnamon desktop on it. And I've been playing around with it, trying it out, and seeing how I like it. And I'll tell you what, for a lot of things you can do on your computer, it works great. If you're the kind of person you, you go on to Google and check your email and you go on to eBay and random websites, then this does everything just as well as Windows will do. Down in the corner, the orange icon is the Firefox web browser, which I'm sure you already know about. But in addition, I'm also running the fairly new Brave web browser. Uh, in my previous video about my top YouTube channels, the Terrence Pop channel, and a lot of his videos, he has advertisements for the Brave browser. And you can go on there and look at it. In Brave browser, it does a lot more to protect your privacy and can keep your information secret. Brave browser is built on the Chromium web browser code base, the same as Google Chrome. But uh, Brave blocks third-party ads, and you can uh, go right into the Tor browser with it for more security. And it just does um, a lot more, and you uh, have a faster browser as a result, because it has to download less data for every web page you want to open with it. So here's just a couple of pages I'm looking at right now. Let me... Bounce around a couple of websites for you, as you can see. Here's eBay. And here's a coin market cap. I use this to monitor the price of cryptocurrencies. It may look a little bit different due to a slightly different font, but you know, for 99% of your average use in your computer. You can do everything just as well in the Brave browser and in Linux Mint as what you're used to doing in uh, Chrome, or uh, rather, I should say, Windows. I go into my email sign-in. It's right there. No problem. Now... If you're wondering, how do you get to files on your computer? Well, let me show you. Up in the corner, it comes with the computer icon and your home folder. Home folder, desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, and so forth. Just like what you're used to seeing, if you've loaded anything in those files. I haven't on this computer. The computer icon. Just like hitting my computer in Windows 7 or File Explorer on um, Windows 8 or 10. This shows you all the drives in the computer and say for example I want to go to one and look up files and folders that are on the computer. Now installing certain things is a little bit different than what you might be used to. 
Say, for example, when I loaded Brave Browser onto this computer's copy of uh, Linux Mint, I had to open up the Firefox web browser. And I went into here. I put in Brave Download. And I went to the uh, download the um, Brave Browser. And I hit Download Brave for Linux. And what you get... You have to be kind of a computer nerd to um, to do this right. And what you get is, it shows you here the information for Linux Mint 17. And it's not just clicking on a, um, a link and downloading it, it's these lines of code. Down in the bottom, let me just hold the camera, down in the bottom, you open up your uh, the black one there, the terminal. And what I did was I had to copy these lines in one at a time. I'll right click and copy and paste and hit enter and let it run the first command. And then I would copy in the second line. and paste it and hit enter and let it do its thing and then copy in the next line and right click and paste it and hit enter and so forth and so on to do the entire installation maybe a little bit weird but if you poke around with it a little bit you'll get used to it and see how it works and once you have it in you're set to go Now, if you go down to the Home button in the bottom left corner, like you're used to seeing in Windows, you get a similar to Windows screen here. And you can do all kind of configurations. This is a Linux operating system, so a lot of the problems you may have in Windows aren't going to work on here because it's not Windows. And you have all kinds of software you can download onto this computer. I haven't even looked into it myself yet. Well, you can uh, download a uh, word processor, like a Microsoft Word variant, onto here. Yeah, that's something to uh, poke around with and see what you can find. Here's an Office click. Here's LibreOffice. I've seen people use LibreOffice and it's compatible with uh, Microsoft Word. So you can download LibreOffice and have that on your computer right then and there. So there's really more than I can get into here in a short video on YouTube. But uh, I would suggest, you know, um, load, put a second hard drive in your computer. A hard drive that is clean and empty and has nothing on it. Load a copy of Linux Mint to that. Install it. Uh, you can go with a Firefox web browser or go like I did with the Brave browser up there. And just start poking around and experimenting and realize that just because Microsoft says you have to upgrade to Windows 10 doesn't mean you have to. I like Windows 7. Windows 7 runs great. And there is no reason whatsoever to upgrade from Windows 7. It's fine. It works smooth, it spies on you less, and I'm happy with it. I have Windows 10 on my work computer, and it used to be 7, but the whole company changed it and said, no, we went 10 on all the computers, and here's your company image. So, yeah, whatever, it's their computer, 10 on that computer. But that's all the 10 I ever want to deal with, and I've seen enough on 10 to know that I don't want 10 on my computer. They change things just for the sake of changing it. And I don't like it. Now, why couldn't they make 10 look exactly like 7? Why did it have to change the appearance? Why did you have to get rid of the My Computer icon? Why do you have to make things look and uh, you know, display in different ways? I don't see a need for that. So, look into Linux Mint, consider it, and uh, 
go read some reviews and play around with it. If you have a second computer to, you can load it on to try it out, go ahead and give it a try. I had to get the camera back out to show you this. As if to further make my point about uh, your web browser storing your information and spying on you, look what I just got in the mail today. A Toro catalog showing me, hey, look at all these Toro lawnmowers you can buy. Well, hey, everybody, you remember last week when I made my lawnmower repair video on a Toro lawnmower? I had been on my computer looking up the parts for it. And what do you know? A week later, I get a Toro catalog in the mail. Seems awfully suspicious to me.